We are now recording. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm all right. How are you? Well, uh, you know, still a little harried. Uh, you know, uh, the, the format of the channel will be changing once I can get my shit together with the audio. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Ah, <laughs> uh, ah. Uh. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Yeah. I, I am always in awe of your amazing hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, relationships with animals. Yes. Yeah, I I have just loved animals as long as I can remember. I've always been fascinated by them. And wanted to like get to know them like on an individual basis yeah. and also as a species, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I kind of put together some talking points. Um, just off the top of my head here, a few things that you need to build a relationship with an animal, especially if it's a skittish one. Always, always do your research. Educate yourself on the species, the breed, the environment your pet needs, what kind of medical care it'll need, etc. Yes. It, yeah. It's always. so important. It's so important. It is. It is, especially with animals like birds that a lot of people think are starter pets. Or reptiles. They're, oh, or my gosh. Reptiles. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. take a lot more care than people think. They really do. Hey, Resident Moon, how are you? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, yeah. I, it it's you will you will end up causing a great deal more harm than yeah. you want if you don't do your research. Exactly. Um, patience and calm. If if you're dealing with an animal that is very scared of people. Staying calm, being grounded, talking softly, being very patient. Those are really important. Um, you want to always be consistent in your behavior, uh, whether it's things like feeding them at the same time every day, walking them at the same time every day. Um, you know, if your pet has a designated playtime, doing that at approximately the same times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, animals really like routine. You know, it makes them feel safe. It makes them comfortable. They know what's going to happen, you know. Um, and you have to be persistent. Um, again, if an animal is very skittish or, you know, standoffish, you just have to keep trying, but it's that combination of patience and persistence. Yeah. Um, yeah. Y you know, like going up to a cat that doesn't like people expressing interest, you know, holding out your hand for it to sniff and talking to it a little. And if it doesn't approach and isn't interested, walk away and ignore it. Let it come to you. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and of course, I hate to have to add this one, but money is always an issue with pets. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Again, especially for exotics, birds, reptiles. Even, uh, even cats. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we have we have uh, several friends who who have spent several thousand dollars on yep. taking care of just non exotic pets like cats and yep. dogs. Um, yeah. sometimes, sometimes all of their teeth rot yeah. and you have to have them extracted. Sometimes they end up with the same kind of, or similar diseases that humans get. And that, uh -huh. you know, pet insurance oh, yeah. is a thing now. Yes, it is. And if, if you are able to afford pet insurance, highly recommend because oh, it yes. can, it can definitely help with, maintenance care and make that more affordable so that hopefully you don't have as many emergencies yeah um so that's kind of the the bullet list of what you really need to work with an animal um i can i i have a couple ways i can approach this 
cats. Um, I would like to tell a story about one of my cats and also the bird that I had before the cats. Please. Um, yeah. So, well, let me start with Romeo. He was a ring neck dove. Oh. Um, yeah. And he did not belong to me. I was living, uh, I had moved in with uh, a friend, a, a couple, that, and her partner uh, all lived together. So I moved in with these friends and they owned Romeo. They had had him for years and years. Uh, he had lived with cats. He apparently would fly around, land on their heads, and they just didn't know how to handle it. The, the cats would just like, mom, slink off. But <laughs> worth noting, that's not actually a safe thing to do, but it turned out okay. Yeah. Um, he, he moved cross country with them. He was an honorary member of the classes that Scott used to teach and, you know, all kinds of things. But he had been ill briefly and they had gotten out of the habit of taking him out of his cage. So, and he, he was never really terribly hand tame. Like you could pick him up, but he didn't much like it. Um, so I started giving him more out time again. We got back into the habit of that. Um, and I'd carry him down to the living room and let him bumble around. He liked to just explore and all. And I would pick him up and give him a little bit of a cuddle. And as soon as he started indicating he wanted down, I'd put him back down. And that that is point number one. You need to respect the animal's space. Listen to them. That is the biggest mistake I see people make, especially with cats. They just immediately want to pick up a cat and cuddle it. And, you know, how would you feel if some random stranger who was 10 times your size came up and scooped you up and started cuddling you without so much as an introduction, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah but i gotta so, i gotta say there's a there's a remarkable yeah. amount of grace for a tiny animal that will stand at your feet and look all the way up at you and just like meow pet me you know mm -hmm. it's they they trust you not to to hurt them yes you know and that's immense it is yeah and that's that's actually kind of where i'm going with this romeo after about five or six months of me kind of Sports cuddling him, but only briefly, only until he wanted down. Mm -hmm. um, he came, he started coming to me and asking to be picked up. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was actually really adorable. He taught me the foot elevator. He'd come stand <laughs> on my foot when he wanted up. And one day I was like, well, let's just see what happens. And I slowly raised my foot and he just <laughs> walked right up my leg. So it was adorable. I have video somewhere. Um, but yeah, it was like he taught me as much as I taught him. And he got to the point, I mean, he trusted me so much by the end of his life, and he lived a long damn time. Ringneck doves uh, live an average of about 12 to 16 years in captivity. Yeah. He was past his expiration date when I met him. He was probably about 18 or 19. They're not exactly sure how old he was when they got him. Yeah. But, and he lived another eight or nine years. I it wonder, was amazing. I wonder if that's because you created a safe, stress-free environment. And therefore, I, maybe his circulatory system wasn't as stressed as it would be, constantly mm -hmm. running from predators in the wild. Yeah. You know? And... I I suspect that had a something to do with it. Yeah. Um, not I mean, to, not actually, to humanize or or anything, but no, I mean no, no, it's, no. it's very much a, like you know nature's cruel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Of course, he he had no sense of self preservation. He'd walk <laughs> right under your feet and just expect you to move. You know. <laughs> well, he's a person. Um, He's a person. I know. He's peopling. Don't you see him peopling? That's <laughs> right. He even had a theme song. Bum, 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 you know. That's fantastic. Um, I, yeah, I can't take credit for that. Shelly developed that. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, he got to the point where he trusted me so much. Like when he molted, 
Mm-hmm. He started letting me get the pin feathers under his eye. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like that's, that's huge trust. Yeah, that is. is such a delicate area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's a yeah. huge thing coming and like just mm-hmm. wiping and you're just, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And it it was, again, persistence, patience, respect. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, he, he was just, he was an amazing bird. He, uh, it was also very clear after that five or six months that I was not mama. I was girlfriend. He courted me. He would bring me little presents, like a paper clip he found on the floor and he'd come get on the foot and get the foot elevator. And I, he liked to nest right here on my cleavage. Best boyfriend ever. Oh my yes. God. And he'd like <laughs> wave it around excitedly and then tuck it under him and do his little. <laughs> it was That's just, adorable. oh my God. Yeah, he was amazing. But he he was a really good object lesson, you know, in yeah. how to tame an animal that's sort of halfway there, you know. Had a full boyfriend, yes. I love had a full boyfriend. <laughs> I've never played it, but I've seen the stills. Yeah. It is it is a delightfully weird game. <laughs> right? Especially the professor who's experimenting on other students, bird. <laughs> just uh I birds get jealous of my hair. Oh, I, I remember bet. staying with a friend of mine who had two love birds, and mm. the male would be like burr, 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 burr. and the female <laughs> would be like burr, 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 burr. and they would there was like this little muff that they would go and populate in, I guess for lack of a better she, word. But she would look at me as she would go in and she'd like get in there, Harold. And then she would proceed to make the most noise and then come out and be like, see what I got? And I'm like, bitch, none of that would fit. What are you thinking is going to happen here? Like, <laughs> yeah, I was I was blessed <laughs> that Romeo always kept it chased. He never once tried to uh, do the deed with me. Although if you threw a hair tie on the ground, the, all bets were off. Well, like you know, I mean, oh my god! <laughs> any any hair tie on a floor, I guess. <laughs> yeah, or socks. He likes socks too. Oh well, that's a human thing too. So yeah, sure with, with teenage boys and socks. Oh, oh Lordy. god! <laughs> oh, I've heard. Yeah. Anyway, oh, um. Man. So that that was kind of the first object lesson. Yeah. Um, the second one is longer, but I'm gonna try and sum up as much as I can. Oh, we have as much so, as we have as much time as you need. It's okay. <laughs> no, I know. I just I I just want to make sure I don't uh drone on too long. But so back in 2020. I had two cats and uh, they were well adjusted and all that. And then a stray cat with something wrong with one of their eyes showed up in my backyard looking for food. And I was like, okay, put some food out, see if I can coax him in. Well, he was so scared. It was obvious that he associated humans with food. Yeah, but he was also so terrified to be about this close to being feral. Um, he we have one of those that near me. we have one of those that uh, my housemate feeds. Uh, he yeah. calls him Scaredy Cat because he runs yeah. from everything. Yeah. Yep. That was Captain. Um, no. I, I started calling him Captain because with the bad eye, he kind of looked like an old war veteran. You yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. And. I, I wasn't sure what was wrong with it. Um, it didn't look like it was infected or anything. It looked kind of scarred over. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's like, well, let me keep feeding him for now and making sure he's at least got food. I had to go in first. And then I could start, after a few days, I started putting the the bowl about 10 feet down the sidewalk from my back porch Mm -hmm. and sitting on the top step. And he gradually would come up and eat there. 
And then I kept just moving it closer. So by the end, there were only about three steps. I could sit at one end on the top step. He'd sit at the bottom on the other end Mm -hmm. and eat. And he seemed to like it when I just quietly talked to him and purred at him. Oh, you know, and I, I'd get a slow blink and like, he'd go sit about 10 feet away and wash after he ate, you know, and it was like, oh, he's being sociable, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So eventually I got worried enough about his eye and what might be wrong with it that I was like, let me borrow a trap from the Humane Society um and so i propped the door open i put tuna in it for a couple of days and you know he, yeah he was nervous but he did go in so on the third day i was like well, let me take a risk you know and i set it up and got him on the first try so hooray hey and then he had a very rough day oh um I had I had told the vet that I was going to be bringing a cat in. I wasn't sure exactly when. And they were like, just drop him off in the morning and we'll see him when we can fit him in. Yeah. So I did that. And he was still in the trap. And I had brought a carrier for them to put him in. Yeah. And they forgot about it <gasps> afterwards. So he just came back home in the trap. But oh. they, we had also talked about, you know, I was like, I doubt you'll be able to handle him. Yeah. So sedate him if you need to. And they, they called me and they're like, yeah, he was being cooperative. Um, so, yeah, they sedated him and they were like, since we've got him out, do you want us to just go ahead and neuter him? And I was like, yep, please. Yeah. So he woke up with important bits missing and, you know, broggy from shots and drugs and, oh. you know, but they tested him for everything and he was fine. And, you know, so... I had a unique situation, though. Um, You know, I did have two other cats, but I also had a home office that was big enough for me to shut him in there. I'd be in there six or eight hours a day, so he'd be forced to spend time with me. But there was enough room that he could keep his distance. And then I'd spend the rest of the time with the other two, you know. (laughs) So... It was, and I know not everybody has that option, but it's a possibility, you know. Um, let's see. I got him home. Um, so he he lived in that office for about three and a half months, more than that, actually. It was three months before we had any kind of physical contact. I just, I left him alone. I talked to him. I'd extend my hand if I walked by and let him sniff, but he usually wouldn't. Um, But he got used to me. He started to understand that I wasn't going to come after him. Like he had obviously been badly abused. Yeah. Um, So I do things like if I was walking i i had a balcony off the office where i smoked so if i was walking by him to get to the balcony i'd kind of if he's here i'd kind of turn my body a little bit away from him so he knew i wasn't coming towards him Mm. and he started understanding that i think um so after three months he had gotten very playful I originally thought he was an older cat. I don't think he was more than a year and a half old. Oh, wow. He was really kittenish. They thought, yeah, he was a young adult. Yeah. Um. So I'm sitting at my desk three months later, and I happen to look down, and I see him peering up at me around the side of the desk with one really big eye, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to add – the bad eye he had had a corneal ulceration that scarred over so it wasn't emergent they were like you probably are going to want to nucleate eventually but it's not not urgent right now so we left it um but yeah he's like peering at me around the desk so you know how you kind of tap 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 your fingers down the desk to get their attention and get them to play so i did that and his eye got so big. <laughs> kind of reached out a paw, didn't quite touch me. So I did it again and got the gentlest little 
on my hand oh. and it was like I was dead. Yeah. It was so cute. Oh. Um and then about two weeks after that he let me I was walking by him. I held my hand out. He sniffed a little and then ducked his head and let me Oh and about forty out forty eight hours later it was Pettin's mama like all the yeah. time. Yeah. It just took that one big leap of faith you know yeah um it is now that was 2020 so it's been almost it's been three and a half years this was in july that i took him in in 2020 yeah um i still can't pick him up unless i'm about to shove him in a carrier like i you know i can't yeah. restrain him in any way um but he is trusting me so much more he has come so far like i recently i went to i i sold my house and a friend let me move in with her um while i got that done and i haven't i it only sold in january so i haven't moved again yet and um i was afraid it was going to set him back because he really i lived alone it was me him and the t- two other cats yeah and it worked out really beautifully because my roommate, he went out of town for a week right as I moved in. Mm-hmm. So he had a week with no other human there so he could settle in and stake out territory. Uh-huh. And then she came home and it was like not, I think, as freaky as he would have been from the get go. Mm. You know, he yeah. had that week of space to just be himself, you know, and go, yeah. okay, this is a cool place. I can dig it, you know. Um, well, it has been, that was, again, it was like mid-July when I moved in here, and it's now February. Mm-hmm. Um, as of about a week ago, he let her pet him for the first time. Aww. That is other than me and the vet, that is the only person who has laid a hand on him in four years. Oh, yeah. And I just, I am over the moon. He, he will, he actually spends a lot of his morning sitting out loaf next to the couch where she hangs out while I'm mm-hmm. in here mm-hmm. in my bedroom at my desk. Um, and he's just, he's social, you know, it's like, yeah. And, and, you know, and I've told her copiously bribe him with treats. That's the way to his heart. It's through his stomach. Um, and she also will play with him a little bit and that kind of thing. And he just, he trusts her now. I mean, he, he still, it's, he, he won't stay for long, but he'll go over there. He said the other day when I was out, he just came right up to her and looked at her like, get on with it, woman. And, <laughs> you know, and she patted him and then he wandered off. But it was just like, oh, be still my heart. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was I mean, it's still an ongoing process four years later. Yeah. Um, but it's it's been a real journey. And basically it's like again i had you you've got to learn when i say like educate yourself about your animal it's not even just read up about that animal learn your specific animal look into what that breed that species tends to do and look at how yours is different or similar yeah um you know, and, and understand when my cat makes this noise, they're asking for food, you know, or they want to go out or they, you know, not that I advocate for cats going out, but every situation is different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it just makes such a difference to really not just pay attention to your pets in terms of give them attention and pets, but like watch them, understand them. It's, it's, you know, Google, like, what does it mean when cats do this, you know, and for anybody who doesn't know what kneading is, it's a nursing instinct. It's how they stimulate the milk glands when they're nursing as infants, you know, and it shows that 
they're very happy and content and they're making a bed for themselves, you know. They're making biscuits. The bakery's <laughs> open. <laughs> exactly. I have oh a my God. I have a faux coyote throw on my bed. And uh, whenever Set jumps up there immediately, he's like, Where's the nipple? Where's the nipple? I'm like, there's uh, no nipples. <laughs> totally. Yeah, my my cat Ezra, uh, big gray boy, he uh he loves to make biscuits. And man, again, I have video of this. He is so intense. <laughs> like he's just really focused. Oh yeah, he's doing it, and it's oh, yeah. just funny. These are going to be the best biscuits ever. Exactly. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's like I go to lie down for a nap, and he gets up on my hip because I'm a side sleeper, and just goes to down. And <laughs> it's so the masseuse sweet. is in. <laughs> exactly. Oh. But. I have a but, friend yeah. whose who's mm-hmm. cats are healers. Oh, um, yeah. I, I ended up staying at her house after a um, paranormal investigation. And uh-huh. I was exhausted. And both cats yeah. slept on me and they would move from mm-hmm. body part to body part. And as they did, uh-huh. the body part stopped hurting so much. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Were yeah, they that purring? Was pretty cool. Yeah, they were. Because, yeah, there's studies showing that purring, the frequency of purring, I I won't quote this as God's honest truth, but yeah. what I've heard is it actually can help to knit bone. Mm. Like, it promotes that kind of healing. Oh, wow. So, That's fascinating. Yeah. I just, yeah. I, I think of, of all of the things that we've learned about humanity and animals and nature up to this point and then you Mm -hmm. think about what we knew a hundred years ago a thousand years ago and how much deeper we get into the understanding of ourselves and our world around us yeah and it it would not surprise me at some point if we found out that pets have a healing mechanism for for themselves for other members of their pride pack and mm-hmm. for, you know, those they consider allies or trusted. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I know that, God, there was one afternoon, this might have been before I had Captain, or it was before he felt safe to get up on the bed. Mm-hmm. But I had had a really rough day, and I lay down in bed, and I was just crying my eyes out. I look up and Ezra's on my hip and Zed, who usually my little tuxedo girl, she usually doesn't sleep up against me, but she was pressed up against my leg. And it was clear that they just were like, mama's sad. Yeah. The best relationship uh, I can ever remember having with a animal companion. Um, I, I had an Ossicat. Yeah. And brought her home and uh-huh. just sat in the hallway. Uh-huh. You know, I was like, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to be quiet and contemplate this cat. And nice. it took about an hour for her to come over. And then I would pet her. And the Aussie cats have dog-like tendencies. They like to play mm-hmm. fetch and hide and seek. Mm-hmm. And it was just this, it was such a a strong connection um when she was teeny she would sleep in the little crook of my arm when she got bigger she would sleep by me and her little head would go over so her little neck would be over mine it was just the most intimate relationship i'd had with a a pet yeah and when she ran away it it just devastated me um you know i i came home after work uh in the middle of the winter it was 20 degrees outside and the front door was open and she was gone oh no um but i i always remember like i would we would play hide and seek in the tub she would duck mm-hmm. down in the tub and then i would go pow and she would go meow and she would put her little paws up it was adorable oh. it was, it was oh. a, i was a wreck she was a great Dad. companion <laughs> yeah but i mean it's that is that is the kind of companionship that is possible yeah with our the the 
other beings on this planet that we share this earth with. Exactly. You know, I mean, again, just like just having Romeo on my chest and this tiny, fragile thing that just completely trusts me and loves me. Yeah. How can you not love them? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and when they're ridiculously cute, like when yeah. they get up on the bed and you look and you're like, who's a cute boy? And then they go, oh, my God, I'm a cute boy. It's yes. just, what do you, you know, how do you not respond to that with, oh, my God, cute boy? I just. Exactly. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, no, you're good. But, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, oh, I keep turning catching. around because. Ooh. Oh, no, it's contagious. <laughs> All right, we're doing I keep now. turning around because Zed is on the bed behind me. And oh. often when I'm on a call like this, mm -hmm. she likes watching screens. And I guess she thinks that I'm talking to her. So a lot of times she'll hop up for a cuddle when I'm on a call like this. But I think she's sacked out. So. <laughs> Yeah, Seth will come in here and make demands. Yeah. like And you can almost hear him going, I demand to see the management. There is not enough food in there. That's right. And I don't have access to the little furry flightless animals outside that I want to murder. You need to do something yeah. about this. <laughs> well, that actually leads me to the topic of enrichment. Mm. Um, because especially with with exclusively indoor animals but even animals that go out they need enrichment they need things to stimulate their mind and their brain mm -hmm. chemistry and all of that yeah um so like for instance where i'm at right now i can't my cat ezra desperately wants to be an indoor outdoor cat mm -hmm. and i'm not in a position to do that i was trying to walk him for a while i need to get him a new harness because the one he has is just a little bit too big so if he turns around and backs up he can get right out of it <laughs> um so i haven't been walking him lately um for other mm -hmm. reasons too but once i do move um i'm you know i'm obviously going to be trying to find a place where i can at the very least take him out on a leash yeah um yeah because like the other two they don't care they like to look out windows but that's as far as it goes captain yeah. i don't think you could pay him to go back outside well captain captain came from a really brutal world <laughs> yeah you i know. mean said if if you opened the door right in front of her she'd probably go but she doesn't care that much Ezra, though, oh, my God, he tries to get out the door all the time. Yeah. So I've been trying to figure out how to enrich his world a little bit because this is a small space with several cats. Yeah. Um. So, like, I have I did bring one of my big cat trees with me and it's in front of the window in my room. Yeah. Um, so he can, you know, look out right now. He's sitting there with the damn curtain halfway open. Hi, neighbors. <laughs> um, but it makes him happy to be able to see out. Like, I'm wondering if at some point I might be able to afford a catio. Oh, you know, a little, yeah, where they can like climb that. outside and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he would love that. Um, yeah. Because he really, when he goes out, he's easy to catch because he just goes straight to the grass and starts eating it. So, like, my I tried. Housemate, in, in, once we start getting grass, my housemate started mm. bringing grass in in a bowl every day so that they oh. could chomp the grass. And that seems to help. Ooh, I, he's very, I am intrigued. He's very intelligent, that one. <laughs> I, I am intrigued by your housemate's theories and would like to subscribe to his newsletter. <laughs> um, that I. That is a good idea. I may try that. Um, yeah, yeah. He would love that. Um, and yeah, it's like I, you know, I've started doing regular playtime once or twice a day, morning and evening. Yeah. Unfortunately, Captain and Zed tend to monopolize the toys. Mm -hmm. uh, Captain is death with the cat dancer. Would <laughs> I don't know if you know what those are. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, the, oh, the yeah. long, flexible <laughs> wire with a little rolled-up cardboard. And, mm -hmm. Oh, my God, he loves that toy. Mm -hmm. I just had to order another one because my roommate's cat 
also wants to play. <laughs> and if she, it's like Captain can be sprawled out on his side and I'll take the cat dancer and wave it in front of Norma. And the second she goes after it, he comes running up and swats at her. And it's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> We share in the house. So I just ordered another one so that we can have two going at once because he does monopolize it. It is hot flash o'clock. Oh, boy. <laughs> Woo, take it off. Oh, man. It's a nice Woo. shirt. I need to get another garbage witch shirt. Mine's falling apart. Oh, this is my favorite one mm -hmm. with the uh, oh, opossum yeah, opossum. <laughs> yes. I, I myself am wearing my Hail Sagan shirt. Ah, fantastic. Also well, with a Baphomet, but good choice. you can't see it. Good choice. <laughs> Sagan met. Yeah. Ooh, okay, here we go. <laughs> yep. But, uh, yeah, so it's like I'm trying to, you know, find ways to to give him more stimulus. Yeah. Because he, he is a really smart cat and very hard-headed um and very sensitive like it's you know he knows like earlier today i walked into my room and i turned around i didn't realize he had walked right up next to me and i stumbled over him and he kind of <laughs> darted off and i was like oh i'm sorry i didn't know you were there and he came right back and mm -hmm. you know accepted my apology yeah um they they all three know that like you yeah. know, when my reaction is, oh, I'm sorry, they all stop and go, okay, she didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I also think that, I mean, in in the sense that these particular words have been completely beaten to death by the spiritual community, you know, mm -hmm. vibration and frequency, we are all capable of feeling it. Yeah. You know, and I think Agreed. that I think that when you feel genuine remorse, that echoes out of you. And that is probably what animals are sensing as opposed to your tone. You know, maybe exactly. the Yeah. So it's Yeah. And and it's something human beings can learn too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's I mean, building trust with them is just it's tantamount to having that good relationship really yeah and that's that's for every literally every relationship on the planet whether you have yeah. a relationship with your with your plants with your environment mm -hmm. with your pets with your fellow human beings you know exactly yeah where the hell is my ah that's what i need a stem toy ah stem uh, toys i i have uh these two rubber pieces that have uh, interlocking and I'm, I'm just kind of going back and forth with them because that's, yeah, my thing. <laughs> I just kind of sit here and do this. It's just uh, kind of looks like rather obscene, but um, it's very nice and soft and stretchy and fiddly. So. Nice. nice. Uh, this was my first intentional stim toy. Yeah. I've certainly years and years bought stuff like this, but I didn't know quite why and yeah. so this was the first one i was like this will be good to play with mm -hmm. so yeah i have but uh can i just think of... my desk is an apocalyptic mess <laughs> oh yeah you you're not seeing my desk which is also an apop apocalyptic mess so i also picked this up which oh, are like wow. little magnetic bits oh that yeah you just kind of and and they are yeah. it's it's a wonderful stem toy. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you wouldn't mind sending me a link at some point, I would maybe be interested in some of those because that sure. was awesome. Sure. Um yeah. some of the some of the like I guess the paint gets off on your uh rubs off on your hands and so you just wash your hands afterwards, but it's just yeah. there's oh it's so such a satisfying feeling. <laughs> yeah, that's this thing is is so like the the little tendrils feel good on your fingers you know yeah. it's all soft well and there's a a nice asmr element to it as well yeah you know <laughs> definitely it anyway <Yay. laughs> speaking of toys though 
yes, definitely. Given the world of toy options out there for especially cats and dogs, but also birds and other species that yeah. play, um, just make sure I will throw in one caveat for birds. Make sure that it is a bird safe material. Um, yeah, because sometimes people will put together wooden toys and use paint that is toxic. Yeah, that kind of thing. You've really got to do your research with birds, especially because they are sensitive. Um, unlike well, <laughs> Romeo wasn't terribly sensitive. He was a tough old thing, but <laughs> like parrots and tropical species are a lot more sensitive. Mm. Um. I, yeah, enrichment and consistency and persistence and all that. It's, yeah, enrichment. I was going to talk about enrichment and toys more. Yeah, they're like, like you were talking about the grass in a bowl. Yeah. Um, there's also, I think it's either wheatgrass or oatgrass that they sell at pet stores that some cats really liked. I tried picking some of that up recently. Nobody mm -hmm. nibbled a single blade. So. I, think it's, I think it's bullshit. I think it's uh, more companies trying to make money off pet owners when you could just go outside and get some I grass and put it in the bowl. Grass. Well, you mm -hmm. do have to make sure that you don't like your yard isn't sprayed with anything. True. Though. If if there are yeah. uh, pesticides or chemicals on your lawn, do not do exactly. this. Yeah. yeah. But um, I don't and know. if there are My pesticides or chemicals on your lawn, I have to ask you why. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, that's yeah, absolutely. But um. I just completely lost that train of thought. I am so sorry. So, oh, that's okay. Grass. Oh, my, oh uh, my, yeah. yeah. My previous cat, Brazil, she loved that stuff. So some cats like it. Some cats don't care. Yeah. Um, they also sometimes sell fresh catnip, um, like oh. plants. Yes. Um, again, she didn't care about fresh catnip. Now the dried stuff, oh, absolutely. But yeah, you know, I have found and, that uh, I've grown cat or I have catnip in my yard, um, uh -huh. and I will dry it, and Set loses his mind. But fresh catnip, eh, yeah, it's the dried stuff, you know, exactly. Yeah. I I can highly recommend the Meowawana brand. As in marijuana, but with meow. Well, marijuana. there was a, a, a few years ago because it's, uh, because it's legal in Virginia to have uh -huh. to to grow cannabis plants. Uh, yeah, set would go after them and oh no, oh yeah, it became a problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we had to cut off access to the plants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I will keep that in mind because in Maryland it is also legal and we're considering it. So yeah, but keep it keep it away from the cats because it it makes them I believe, stupid. <laughs> yeah, I I believe we have a grow box. So ah, nice. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at any rate, there is a brand of catnip called Meowawana. That's fantastic. And yeah, but they have different blends. Like I knew that some cats love valerian root hmm. because again my former cat brazil when i drink valerian tea she would try to shove her whole head in my mouth wow to smell it yeah and they sell some with like valerian root They're, they'll put passion flower a couple other kinds of things that cats seem to like so it's like different blends isn't valerian um, the really stinky root, or am I thinking of vervain? No, it smells like armpit. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. But dried and in that mix, it's not a big deal. It's not like you're drinking the tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. But, um. yeah, and just there are so many toy options out there. Oh, yeah. Get a few... I would avoid getting anything fancy and expensive to start with. Yeah. Try simple toys, different types, like for cats, the little like furry mice. 
Mm -hmm. Try those. Those are deep, and my cats go to town on those. Mm -hmm. um, or if you know somebody, if you know somebody that has ethically ethically sourced pelts, you can make your own. You can ask for yeah. a pelt and just kind of you know wrap the pelt around a, like a ball inside and sew it up and make it look yeah. like a little mousy. Exactly. Yeah. Um. I know people who crochet and knit cat toys and stuff them with catnip, you know, yeah. but yeah, don't feel like you have to get the fancy expensive stuff. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, I mean, cats love playing with milk jug rings, you know, <laughs> and paper bags and paper bag. boxes. Yes. <laughs> you're going to get your the, cat an it, expensive toy and then you're going to be upset when the cat doesn't play with it so yeah yep. <laughs> well and also beds i have found that what my cats mostly seem to prefer are just your basic bolster beds oh crap and ezra is puking oh oh poor guy well Aww. landed on the cat tree at least <laughs> um that's all right i'll get it in a minute but um the the ones that are just like round with just a little rolled edge all the way around yeah they love those and those are the cheapest ones you know? oh, wow oh that's oh poor kitty oh god where did that go <laughs> oh well i'll find it poor guy <laughs> he says yeah. i'm just stressed yep well apologies for that <laughs> it is yes. part of it is part of being a pet owner it's it is indeed yes my stuff like that you know yeah in fact on on that note my uh brother's family just adopted two seven-year-old bonded sister cats yeah um and one of them one of them is like in 24 hours she was sacked out on the couch with them she's very brave and confident the other one is more nervous and has been hiding under the bed, but coming out in the evening. Mm -hmm. And apparently that one, Shadow, is very talkative. Mm. And I, I was told by my 15-year-old niece that she gives lots of squeak. And I was like, yay, I love talkative cats. And she said, yeah, it's really cute until it's four in the morning. Ask me how I know. And I just laughed. Cause oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. is one of the hazards of having a pet. Oh, live yeah. and learn oh yeah but yeah. especially when they like set has this voice that i call his yelly voice when he goes oh yeah. so, mm -hmm. really karen what do you need like <laughs> exactly oh my gosh <laughs> yeah <laughs> but and again that's that's something to listen to you know, if your cat makes different noises, it's telling you different things. Oh, yeah. And you obviously know that. So, like, notice if they're yelling at you, making a specific noise, is that the feed me voice? Is that the we're out of water? Is that the I have pooped a mighty poop voice? I mean, <laughs> they tell you all kinds of things. Yeah. I, I had a cat that would you know, just sail around the living room, you know, the post-poop zoomies singing at the top <laughs> of her lungs. Oh. Um, created poop? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel so much lighter now. <laughs> Ridiculous animal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can I can usually tell when Set is just complaining. Because mm -hmm. this place is ridiculous. <laughs> just like, look, I'm busy, man. I got stuff going <sighs> When I was working from home, he would come in and just be demanding. And I'm like, do you not? This is a spreadsheet. This is what I get paid to do. You don't pay rent. I do. So. Exactly. Well, like, mortgage. Do you want to keep yes. those nice. <laughs> like you want to keep the nice crunchies and wet food and all that. Yeah. Let me do this. I know. Right. Go out and get a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Have you seen have you seen the, the video um that was done with the cat having a camera strapped to him and then he leaves the house and smack my bitch up by prodigy prodigy starts playing and he like starts robbing people at knife point and doing drugs and 
like I am not. To hook. it's just the funniest oh my god that's fantastic <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty awesome <laughs> Yeah. God, that reminds me of the, in a roundabout way, of the guy who set up a a camera on his cat flap to basically detect whether the cat had something in its mouth. And if it had something in its mouth, it wouldn't open because she'd bring in dead stuff all the time or live stuff, even worse. Yeah. Um, And it was reasonably successful it would occasionally mess up and either not let her in empty-handed or let her in with something but yeah, yeah, yeah. it was really cool there if you google something like that it'll it'll come up he had a whole site about it it was very interesting oh nice very yeah nice. but um one more tip when you play with your cats and probably with dogs too although i'm not sure for cats always give them a little bite of food or a little treat afterwards Mm -hmm. it does really good things for their brain chemistry apparently because it signals a successful hunt like yay i did the things and i got the reward you know oh okay i I can't again don't quote me 100 percent on that i think i picked that up from like jackson galaxy so but if you're not familiar with Jackson Galaxy, though, My Cat from Hell on Animal Planet, yeah. very good show. He really gets into a lot of the behavioral stuff and how to make your house more cat friendly. Okay. Um, they yeah. also have good shows on uh, dogs and dog behavior. Uh, they have one, I forget what it's called, but it's basically shelter dog to service dog. Yeah. Um, and of course, not all the dogs pan out as service dogs, but yeah. Yeah. a lot of them do. You can train them, you know. Yeah. Um, What's well, a matter of, yeah. of you know being empathic enough to connect to to want to get to know another creature? Yes, you exactly. know to understand them and to you yeah. know meet their needs as much as you hope that they meet your needs for something uh for a small companion that you can give your little affection to you know play yeah so yeah i mean the the biggest if if there's one big takeaway from all of this treat your animals with respect please you know don't treat them how you wouldn't want to be treated yeah. Just because they are smaller than you and, you know, you can overpower them doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Unless, obviously, it's an emergency and you have to. But, yeah. you know, and you're always going to have to take the pet to the vet or whatever. But and exploding. With respect. Yeah. Exploding on an animal in rage oh, is, is yeah. terrifying to them. It's terrifying yes, it to children. It's terrifying yeah. to grown people. Yeah. You know. Agreed. Yeah. And for the love of all that is holy people, don't hit your pets. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I I don't care if it's a bop on the nose. Don't do it. Yeah. Nobody needs to be hit. You can if again, education right there. There's plenty of information on how to train your pets with positive reinforcement which that actually technically is positive negative reinforcement is not doing anything just not reacting positive reinforcement is anything that you do so we may think of that as negative reinforcement but it's still technically positive but yeah using either non-reaction or redirection um one more tip for cat owners get scratching posts they oh have my god so please. many different kinds please because your furniture will thank you yeah <laughs> i dated a guy owners do Woo. yeah mm-hmm. i dated a guy years and years ago who had two cats one of whom was declawed which don't declaw your cats either but oh my god, he was no. talking about declawing the other one and i looked around and i was like Harry, do you even own a scratching post? Well, no. So I went out and bought like three of them, put them in there. Yeah. And Bobby comes tearing up straight to it and just goes to town. Well, it's how they they groom their claws. (laughs) Yeah. And it's also a way to mark territory. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, in with, with rodents, 
You yeah. have to get wood blocks that they chew because their teeth keep growing and mm -hmm. will impale their skull if they're not able to maintain, yeah. you know, and I would imagine that the claws you, in the same yeah. way that our nails split, their claws mm -hmm. also split and that can't feel good. Um, yeah. I did have a question. Uh, many yeah. years ago, I remember uh, pet owners putting caps on their uh, pet's claws, like little oh, yeah. rubber caps. Soft paws. Yeah. yeah. Is that a little better than declawing yeah. or is it? I mean, yeah. Oh, it's much better if, okay. they, if okay. they still exist. I'm just wondering if that hurts the pet at all. Oh, yeah. Soft claws, cat nail caps, 40 count. Yeah. It should, I mean, you may, it's going to depend on whether your cat will put up with it. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah. I can't imagine. I mean, just know. like I could see them just doing this the entire time. Right. Yeah. As far as I know, they are safe and they're not going to hurt the cat. Um, They're just going to be hard to keep on. Yeah. Um, And to get on in the first place. That might be something to talk to your vet about. <laughs> Yeah, but like one of the corners yeah. in, the, in the walls in your house, put up a little scratching, like corner yeah. edge, you know? Yeah, yeah. I had at my last house, I had a gorgeous banister post at the top of the stairs mm -hmm. that very quickly developed claw mark. So <laughs> they had, um, it's actually something for a wall corner. It's yeah. a folding one with sithel rope. and. Yeah. I just zip tied that to the post and they loved it, you know, and it protected the post and gave them something to scratch on where they wanted to scratch. Yeah. I, it's, it's just, yeah. You know, learn your, learn your species in and out, yeah. you know, what they like, what they don't like. Yeah. Um, It just makes such a difference. And, and it, I mean, especially with dogs, that are usually used in, in security situations. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to get a Malinois, yeah. learn what you need to do to keep that yeah. pet active and thriving. Like yeah. don't get a Jack Russell Terrier if loud sounds and barking irritate the crap out of you and a little dog zooming everywhere irritates exactly. the crap out of you. Jack Russell Terriers are, are like, they, they need a lot of activity. They were you bred know. to run with carriages. Yeah. So, I mean, you it's, know. it's, you know, know, know your breed, know what they usually want. And yeah. Try to, yeah. try to provide that. Don't be a dick by forcing what you want yeah. on a pet because you yeah. think they should want it. Yeah. And for God's sake, feed your cat meat. Thank you. Well, Cats I mean, are not I, vegan. No, they are not. They are carnivores they're not even omnivores and for if the, the most fact, part yeah and if the fact that a cat is an omnivore upsets you don't own a cat yeah yep yeah. but yeah Oof. wow it's 259 <laughs> we made it an hour we made it an hour yeah we did yeah i'm just kind of looking over my notes here but yeah, I mean, I think I've covered pretty much everything that everything that I wanted to write. Um, and yeah, like I said, Google all the things. Why yeah. does my dog bark? Why does my cat lick itself? I don't know. Yeah. You know, why does my why you... does my pet headbutt things? I mean, it's there. Yes. We have more access to information. Yep. About literally everything mm -hmm. than at, at any other point in human history exactly yeah and you know what if you if you're not good with googling because sometimes it's takes special combinations of words and stuff yeah. to really wade through it yeah haul up a vet you know yeah. ask can i can i talk to someone about this better yet call up if it, if you're especially if you're dealing with a dog or a cat talk to someone at your local humane society before you adopt yeah um they can give you all kinds of information oh yeah if you're interested in a bird find a rescue as if like Please. especially 
yeah find, find a rescue. rescue yeah and they often require people to volunteer with the birds before they take them home so they can understand yeah. what all is involved in caring for them yeah like fortunately pigeons and doves are easy it's like right. you know grocery store seed maybe pigeon pellets um tap water and you know just a big enough space for them yeah. um romeo was simple but with birds vet bills do get expensive yes they do yeah yes they do oh i think i'm fried thank you so <laughs> much for joining me today nixie no problem this is thank you for pleasure. letting me ramble yeah absolutely yeah absolutely oh. and, we learned um, we learned a lot talked about a yeah. lot and uh yeah. you know thank you everybody who joined us yeah definitely um, i i can't see who's on i'm not on twitch right now but <laughs> but thank you for being here whoever listened to me ramble <laughs> and uh thank you for inviting me this was awesome oh i'm glad you had a good time i did too this is uh yeah. this is my happy place being able to have conversations like this definitely definitely yeah all right well all right. i will sign off and 